Hi everybody, my name is Cindy James. Welcome to my encaustic art studio. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a series of three miniature birch tree paintings. It was a very long video, so I did break it into three parts. The first is the background, the second is the birch tree portion, and the third is an oil rub and just finishing the paintings. So I hope it's helpful to you. I hope you enjoy it. And please reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer if I can. Thanks very much. Okay, so the plan was to show you some birch trees. So let's let's do that. I'm gonna take a little bit of this off just because I want a dark color for the base layer of the birch trees. And uh, I think I've got a green in my pot, so that orange is going to neutralize it. Yeah, that's very green. So I think this is my uh, raw umber. I'm going to mix some of that with it. Could be my, yeah, that's raw umber. There we go. It's still on the green side, but not as green. I'm going to add some clear medium and I think I'll start with this one. I find it works best if your surface is warm because you're going to draw with, I use a, a fan brush. This is a Princeton Select Bristle Fan Number no. 4 and although it's a synthetic brush it stands up really well to the encaustic uh, temperatures. I work at about 150 degrees so it's not super hot. So I just basically try to draw with the corner of the fan brush. So if your brush is nice and hot and I, I make a little puddle and if your surface is warm, you should be able to draw a pretty decent line. Okay, and I'll put one in the foreground. And I'm just going right over top of these lines that I drew in. And I'll make this one a little bit wider. Now if your brush starts to stick or if you start getting chunks of wax, you might just need to let it warm up and fuse as you go. Just one or two quick passes. because you don't want to melt it flat. I'm just going to smooth out my edges because I did scrape those off, but I didn't smooth them. Okay, so this one I'm just going to warm up. And okay. I think I'm going to make this guy pretty gnarly. It's hard for me to not draw a straight line. I tend to draw straight lines. My grade eight art teacher once commented that I was very good at drawing straight lines. And you know what? I think I just like drawing straight lines, which 
definitely comes through in my artwork. Okay, I'm gonna add some color. This green is just, I don't know, a mixture of my wax scrapings. I, I always save everything in a tin and then I melt it down, run it through some cheesecloth and I have plenty of random color, usually green, gray, bluey type colors. So we wanna build these up a little bit so we have something to carve into. Okay, and what am I gonna do over here? I don't want this guy too wide, so I'm gonna just keep adding on to the surface a little bit. But I might put something, maybe I'll put two, two small ones over here. Okay, so I'm just very gently drawing with the corner of this fan brush. And as long as your surface is warm and your brush is nice and warm, you should be able to get across the surface. Now these are very small paintings, so if you're doing something larger, you probably should scale up and it would be easier to have your brush sitting in a pot just to keep it hot, I'm sure. I tend to work small most of the time, so. But yeah, yeah. my experience is you definitely need to have a pot of wax if you're, you know, doing something a little bit larger because having it resting on the palette, you, you just go through your paint too quickly. A puddle's not enough, in other words. For these small paintings, I can get away with a little puddle on the, on the palette. Okay, so I like those. Let's see what I can do with this rocky one here. I'm not sure where that came from, but... But, maybe... It's still warm, so I think I'll just go with it. I think I need a bit, a bit more of a puddle there because my brush doesn't feel warm enough, and you'll definitely get a feel for it. The more you do it. And I'm not going for realism here as you can you can tell. Maybe I'll put two no the bigger or smaller. Oh well I think now the decision has been made for me. come down from the opposite side. I don't do that a lot because I find I end up making my trees wider at this side if I do that. So I try to start from from the bottom because you know the trees are usually a little bit thicker at the bottom. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to fuse that right away, but if, before I do, because it's kind of the right temperature right now, I'm going to put some 
some lines in and just sort of more random scratching, I guess. And I'm just going to do these a little bit lighter than I did these other ones because I want them to pick up the oil paint. And I'm going to kind of like go right over top of my trees because I'm going to put white over top. And in fact, I'll probably put another layer or two of darks, but just to give this impression of branches or a forest. This one, will I do the same thing? Yeah, I think I will. So I'm not pushing too hard with this, this tool. And when I fuse, I'll, I'll probably lose some of them. But like I say, I just want want some marks to um, pick up the oil. I think I'll avoid going too much down over maybe a little bit, but you can vary the depth of these as well. I've been keeping them pretty, pretty light, but I'll maybe put a few deeper lines on the assumption that I'm going to end up fusing some of those away. So if this is still warm. I'm just going to go over my underpainting, I guess you might say, of the trees, because I'm going to put white over top. Okay, I'm going to give those a light fuse. And let's do the white. All right, I've got a white-ish fan brush here. I'm just going to put that right into my pot of white. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with the white. And this is kind of an off-white anyway. All right, and then just, you don't want this white layer to be too thick because you want your dark marks to show up when you draw on your birch trees. but I do try to make them filled in. Don't worry too much about the bottoms I, yet. I'll uh, figure that out when I finish them off. I'm going to add a little bit of my full strength white. I just feel it's a bit, a little bit dull. Maybe I'll put it on there. Maybe not every tree.
And as your trees get bigger, you could use a, a wider brush. Um, this is a lunar mop, Princeton Select half inch. Uh, you could you could use that for this bigger tree. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can demonstrate that. I think I can get it to work. Just a little easier to, I mean, and this isn't a big tree by any means. It's this, these are four by four pine blocks. So, you know, as your trees get bigger, it becomes more and more challenging. And I do brace my hand on something usually. Okay. So now before I fuse these, I'm going to clean up my, any edges like this one in particular, I sort of went off too far off of where I want it to be. So I'm going to just scrape this white back to the edge of the, the tree before I fuse. I kind of like to have the dark edges. All right, that one. I think the other ones are okay. Maybe this one, a little bit right here. So I'm going to really gently fuse these just to smooth out the white. And then I'm going to use this tool to make my marks. And I usually fuse these um, the same direction as the trees go. And it, you don't want too much. That's why it's good to work on more than one painting at a time. You can move on, come back to this first one, try again because it's a little chunky at the bottom. I wanna, I like them smooth. You don't have to. I find it helps to go a different direction sometimes. I'm just going to let those trees cool a little bit before I start making marks on them. I guess I'm not going for realism, but something more than just floating. Okay, so I'm going to start making some birch tree marks. And I just use this pointy tool. Um, I find less is more, but um, yeah, I just make a series of lines, dots. You can even, sometimes on these bottom parts, you can, I might scrape them down because they, you know, because I start my brush there, they might get a little bit thicker than I want. And yeah, try to build it into your ground. Now, if you want to draw some more intentional branches on there, you can do that.
try to make sure I do some marks right from the edge of the tree so that it has that impression of being round. And I'm just going to scrape a little bit of this back here because it's got some of the black there that I think adds some character. And I'm just going to Actually, I think I'm going to do the same on this edge here. Let's give the tree a bit of a, a bend this way too. So when you use this scraping tool, it's best to use it very flat. Otherwise, you end up just gouging in. Okay, but it is fun to make these marks for sure. That's why I say less, less is more because you can get carried away and you end up with a lot of marks, I guess. Sometimes too many. That's other another thing to remember, I guess, is your bigger tree should have bigger marks. I'm just going to put my line back in here because I did lose it a bit with the tree. If you have a lot of trees, this can actually be pretty time consuming. Sometimes what I'll do is just to give the impression of a tree in the background. I'll make the, the marks of the birch tree, but without actually putting one in there. Okay, I'm, I'm barely pressing onto the wax at all because I really don't want to gouge in. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So let's try this one. And as it cools, of course, it gets harder to make those marks. And you can heat up your tool, you can give this a really light fuse. I mean, it's not difficult to make the marks, but you know, they just may not um, happen quite so easily. So just make adjustments as you see fit, where you see fit. can use this pointy end too if you want to define your edge. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on, but 
mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. Okay, well I like what's happening with these trees. I still don't know about this wavy line and I'm probably going to give some texture to these areas that I sort of drawn out here. Um, but I'm going to fuse these really gently because I don't want to lose my marks. They will kind of bleed a little bit as you can see, but that's okay. You just want to be quick with the torch. If you're using a heat gun, um, yes, be quick with the heat gun. Try not to move the wax. Okay, so I'm just going to play with some of these bases here. So they don't look like they're floating. All right, I'm not really liking what's going on here, so I'm gonna probably get rid of these circles. I just don't seem to be making those work. I'm just gonna warm them up really lightly. And I'm gonna put some lines in similar to the other side and see what happens with that. I, I won't try to remove them completely, but yeah, because part of it was this wavy part I didn't like. So I'm just going to straighten that out a little. That's a little bit more interesting. Not quite sure how I'm going to get in between these two trees. I might have to sacrifice them a little bit, but I think I could probably get them back. There we go. Okay, I'm liking that better. Okay, and I'll let that cool off. Okay, so I let this cool. I'm going to have to fix my tree there. So I'm going to uh, maybe just, might be able to get away with just sort of drawing it back in. We'll see. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that worked out better. I definitely like that ground area more. So, I think I will put this line back in now. There. And as far as these, I might texturize these bottom parts a little bit just to give them some interest especially in this one this one it uh, has a little more variation between uh, the top and the bottom but this one doesn't so I think I'm going to do something here
Okay, so I'm going to fuse these and I'm going to let them cool and then I'm going to do the final step, which is an oil rub. And um, actually, before I get to that, I'm going to put my signature on.